Good morning to day four, three, nine. I think it's actually 440 actually. Anyway, well, welcome, how are you? Hope you're all good, sorry I've not um, videoed so much. And sorry the last couple of videos have been cut quite short as well. I've uh, not been filming that much and can't quite remember if I finished them off or not. So a couple of them have got sort of finished off halfway through. So anyway, we're still busy. I say we, I'm not so busy. I've got uh, the mother-in-law and father-in-law in, which is quite nice to have. Welcome, hope you're having a great time. Um, Sherwin's been in here busy. We have been working, but I've just not been as busy. Um, so what are we planning to do at the moment? So we're still finished off the air conditioning. Um, yesterday, the uh, electricians came and put in the mains for the condensers. Um, all of the actual air conditioning items have been installed now. So the condensers are below, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and the cassettes are on the wall mounted downstairs as, as well as all of the actual copper uh, and the runs. The only thing that needs to be done is the ductwork, which I'm under the impression is gonna be starting at some point today, stroke tomorrow. So air conditioning's in, electrics connected, mains are in the actual main house and in the fuse board. It's just the ductwork now. Um, we've obviously finished off the floor inside. Um, you've seen that already, but I'll show you obviously what that looks like now that it's completely finished. Um, and um, the suspended wall, the little partition we're going to be putting, we've had the wood cut, you've seen that, that's going to be starting to put, I'm going to put that together today, as you can see. The Dewalt shorts have come out, come out to play. So today I'm going to put that together and we're going to decide whether we're going to cut it in half and do two four foot items that are hinged that we can fold away or take off the wall or whether we're going to make an eight foot piece that's fixed in place full time. Um, I think it would be better to have something temporary um, and my... Uh, my reluctance to do that was the state of the floor, but the floor's not too bad. Now that we've actually sanded it down with that horrible grinder, cleared it up and stained it, it doesn't look too bad. So we could get away with doing both. So let me know in the comments below, what would you do? Would you have a eight foot full time um, piece of art, because it would look nice, um, that doesn't move, or would you go for two four foot pieces um, that are gonna have a, you know, it'll be nice to have them removable or by folding, but obviously to get those put together and get them working is gonna be bloody difficult. So. The next question will be, if it is going to be that, how are we going to hinge it? Um, or how are we going to hang it on the wall to ensure that it doesn't fall over and it's stable? So, um, but obviously it would be nice to be able to, at some stage, if you want to, push the bed right up to one corner and remove the partition and have one big open plan floor. So that, that's my thought. My thought is it would be good to have it as a usable open space. And if we fix it in place at eight foot, then that's not going to happen. Um, but yeah, so to have it removable or um, at least half of it that was removed, that would be better. So let me know in the thoughts below, what do you think? What do you think we should do? Um, yesterday I rolled the back turf as well with our lovely roller that was left by the gardener who never came back to finish the job. I mean, admittedly the roller's seen better days, that's for sure. Uh, but I rolled it, it needs a few more rolls in all fairness and then it's gonna need some water on it at some stage. So it's flat and it's not too bad. you downstairs and show you obviously what we did so we say we me so we rolled this obviously i rolled this yesterday just to try and see how flat it would be um this bit here we didn't touch so it's still a little bit high but in all fairness it's just really about trying to stop the water going that way it was it was meant to go that way but now we're putting more mud down there so i broke up as much as i could and tried to flatten as best i could um with the roller i tried to get the roller on some of it and as you can see it's a little bit flatter now but I haven't rolled any of this this has all just been flattened with a hoe and I've still got to do that bit there so what we need to do is take that right over and just create a bit of a, a valley so this is higher and the water's incentivized to run around that way if there's going to be water that is so that's where we are so far I think you'll agree it's actually not as bad as we thought it was going to be it's actually quite high obviously we're looking into next doors so we're quite high um, but we just need to get the roller on it break up some of these these big bits here so they'll see that they can uh, they'll be easily flattened but again once the water start, uh, touches this stuff it does seem, uh, tend to break down quite quickly so this seems to be quite seems to have quite a bit of flex on this need to get that redone uh, so yeah, we need to get the roller over this again and um, just literally pull a little bit more of this down and just smooth it off on here. And then uh, to a certain extent, it's just letting nature do its thing, really. Um, grass. Grass, guys. I need help with grass. Ideally, I want grass seeds. I don't want grass turf. Turf is bloody expensive here. 
Uh, I mean, the quote of so far between 12 and 14,000 for turf sheets. I mean, shit me. And I'm going to have to obviously rig up all the actual... Um, I mean, there is an irrigation system in here, obviously, but I'm going to have to get that rigged up. I'm going to have to get a pump on it. I'm going to have to keep it wet all the time. Then there's going to have to be weeding going on. Then there's going to be cutting going on. And I know everyone says, oh, but it looks so much better if it was grass. And it would. But the price, the cost, and the, uh, the maintenance of doing it is going to be horrendous. Um, and to a certain extent, I mean, I don't know how wide it is exactly, but that's 30 foot, so it's about... Let's say 40 foot, 40 foot wide by 60 foot. So to a certain extent, I could put four, four? I could put five, five rolls of AstroTurf down for the same money. And there is no weeds, and there is no lawn care, no cutting, it looks green. Can't walk on it, because it gets boiling hot. <laughs> so it looks great, but it's completely non-functional. But it would be the same price and there'd be no maintenance. So. Let me know in the thoughts below. Send me some pictures, send me some gumph, send me some links on stuff that you've seen on the island that looks good. Number one, it doesn't have to all be grass. Is there some ideas of the walkways and, I don't know, some concrete slabs and some areas to have trees and hedges and you know, some form of uh, plants rather than all being grass? And number two, where the hell do I get grass from that's not going to have, have me having to sell an organ? As you know, I've already sold organs. So um, I still need to sell more organs to do the stuff I've got to do left, let alone putting bloody grass down and everywhere there's grass everywhere grass everywhere no one paid for it <laughs> so I know if I want to select a certain grass I've got to go and get a certain seed or I've got to get a certain turf I do understand that so is that going to be the best option for here if so where the hell do I go and how much how much can I get it down to rather than it being a massive hemorrhage bear in mind there's going to be a maintenance and uh, cutting and everything else that goes with it I would rather have grass even though it's going to cost me time and money. But at the same time, if there's other options, what are the options? Anyway, so let me take you into the cottage and show you where we are with that as well. So, inside here. Sherwin, morning, how are you? Starting to set some stuff out. So, we sanded this down, as you know. Sanded it all the way down, and uh, Sherwin has actually stained it and painted it with the same color as this. So it doesn't look pretty, obviously, but it looks 10 times better than it did. And because it's now stained, you can't see the, the difference in colours over there. Now, the issue we will have with that is if, if and when we put another floor on here, we're going to have to come up slightly on here because there is a slight height difference on the concrete to here. So we have to put some form of membrane on here, like a foam, um, uh, some form of membrane. You meant to do it anyway, so a membrane down here to hire it a little bit so that the floor, we could then run the floor out to here. So, we, do we actually make the eight foot on here and have it fixed full time? Or do we split this into, into two and have two four foot pieces? Um, so there's two on here, two on here, two on here, two in the middle, and then the slats can go in the middle and then we can hinge it here and do the same thing again. That's probably gonna be the best bet. But I think we're gonna make it eight foot for now and just see what it looks like. Um, we can easily take that apart and cut it down, obviously, um, to make that decision. The biggest problem is how do we hinge it onto the wall? Do we hinge it on the wall? And do we hinge it in the middle? And does it then bifold to here? So it will literally it will cascade like that against this wall. Or do we have it so that each panel um, slots onto each other? So this one that's on the wall here, it slots onto the wall. And then this one slots onto the second one. And then somewhere there's here, maybe there's like a, just a dead bolt that goes into the floor. So it's fixed and it's in place. But if we want to take it down, we can take it down. So let me know in the comments below whether, whether you know, there's any links or um, any pictures that you've seen of something like this. And let me know whether you think it should be an eight foot fix or whether it should be something that's temporary that we can remove or, or bifold. Um, that'd be greatly appreciated. To a certain extent, we're pretty much done in here. The floor's been cleaned. He's been on his knee, his knees, bless him, with the scourers and getting those done. The bathroom itself is nearly finished. Um, electricians have been in, mirrors on the wall. Got to put the fascia back on and the fascia's back in there as well. But this is all finished. This is all finished. This is pretty much done. We need to get some tiles cut into the actual um, the trap itself and we've got to fit the shower screen and we're still waiting for the window the window apparently the windows are arriving yesterday stroke today so clearance in the port and then there's going to be windows installed as i said that one there apparently has been broken in transit um so but it's one glass and a blind so we'll be able to fit it so it's protected and then they'll have to send another one later um so again again we can get that in and we can also work on getting that one fixed in and fingers crossed the monster will be here as well 
So we can get all three of those fitted next week as well, if we manage to get them cleared and delivered sooner rather than later. Um, that's pretty much where we are so far. So I'm gabbling away, as always. Hit me with a, a thumbs up down below um, and give me some comments, would be greatly appreciated. Uh, Michelle, um, Trevor, etc. Thank you for your comments in the last couple of days, greatly appreciated. Deborah, thank you for promising to do cakes for the birthday. That would be greatly appreciated too. Um, and also, Carl, how do you know someone I know in England? Look forward to seeing when you come over. Don't forget to reach out by email. Anyway, so I'll leave you to it for now, and I'll update you later on throughout the day. In the meantime, if there's anything you want to ask or any comments, hit it below and I'll check on you soon. Take care. Okay, a bit of sweat going on. Welcome back. We're starting the frame. Now, the frame is eight foot. I'm not too sure eight foot was a great idea. Um, obviously, it's going to be a frame which is all mainly downrights. So, as a result of that, there's no cross members, so there's no real support. <clears throat> obviously, we can fix it into the floor if we do the fixed piece. Fixing the floor, fixing the wall, that will hold it as an L shape. Uh, but obviously, you've still then got the, um, the height of the eight foot. So, I'm not too sure whether this is going to be a good thing or a bad thing. So, in the moment, what I'm doing at the moment is just putting it in place to see what it looks like if it's going to be an eight foot piece. Um, and put a couple of the 45 degree angle pieces in here, one dead center and then another two dead center of the centers. Um, that then gives me an idea about how it looks size wise, um, and it's also given me an idea flexibility wise what it's going to be like when it comes uh, together. Now, obviously, I've not glued it, so we'll pull these apart and glue these, clamp them um, to make give it a little bit more stability. Um, but I'm not too sure we're going to get a great deal of stability out of it because of the height. Um, but it does look okay. I was, I was in, you know, as, as I said in the video earlier on, do I go um, bifold, do I go removable? Um, I think because of the height, we definitely have no choice but to go fixed. Um, and I definitely think we need to keep it as one piece as well. I mean, if we did do two frames in the four foot, it would have four centers. So that would give it more stability. But again, they're all down, they're not cross. So, um, but anyway, obviously it would give it more strength because there'd be a, a few doubles in the middle. Um, Maybe that's what we need to do. So anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this down as it is now. Um, I'm thinking about putting some washers above and and at the bottom and just doing one screw so they're all movable. Um, so if I don't put the washers there, then it's gonna scratch. Um, the downside to that obviously is that two screws at the bottom, two screws at the top would help stabilise it a bit more. So obviously going down to one screw gives the possibility of movement, uh, but it is gonna take some stability away. So I need to have a good think about that. Anyway, um, that's where it's so far. So let me know your thoughts. Okay, so we're at quarter past two. Dusty, I've finished. That's the eight foot one, what do you think? So that's the eight foot one. Now, we didn't actually calculate the slats very well. Um, I think potentially we could have done with putting another one in because standing here, you shouldn't be able to see anything at 45 degrees and you can. So, um, I mean, you can still turn them on the 45 degrees, and I'm sure it'll cover. Um, but I think we should have had another one in this side, another one in this side. So there's a center one right here. Um, we could have, probably could have done with another one on each side. So 45 degree angle, uh, they're all set. Now we did have a little bit of a waving issue in as much as it's tall. So we've um, had to fix it, unfortunately, into the wall a little bit more than we wanted to. And then under the 45 degrees, we've actually put some screws in there as well. So it's actually fixed on the bottom and fixed on the top. Now. Obviously, we'll get the light coming through from the side window into the bedroom itself, which is quite cool. Um, but again, eight foot, very thin. Um, the only thing we can probably do if it doesn't work out as well as I thought it would is to go and buy some more sheets and double up all of these lengths so they're actually thicker. Um, but as you can appreciate, that is probably four sheets, so it's quite heavy. Um, but again, it's on the concrete floor. It's fixed in with concrete, now, um, concrete screws. We'll have to work out how we're going to cover up these horrible blue con con uh, construction screw heads. Um, we'll probably have to draw them in a bit deeper and then get some filler over them. Um, and then we're just about to glue this um, and uh, clamp it together so that'll make it a little bit more sturdy. So yeah, we've decided to go along with one screw at the top and one screw at the bottom so that we can still louver them. So all of these now still move. Um, that means obviously we can change the, di yeah, the, the direction of the sun. Um, it does mean, however, it's a little bit less stable as it would be if there was um, those two. But anyway, the main, the main thing is obviously when we're coming in from the living area that you can't really see straight through to the bedroom. So it does do that. 
However, I did want it so that when you stood besides here, you didn't really see straight, straight through. But then saying that, it's probably better that you can rather than you can't. Anyway, it's done. And the father-in-law is actually a plumber stroke bathroom fitter by trade. So guess what he's been up to? Ta da So he's fitted the glass in here. Now I fitted the ones over the road on the floor up against the concrete. Now I know that allows a weakness for the water to go behind, um, but obviously they've, got, they've only got a fixture to the wall and there's no screen, you know, no corner um, support or no top support for these. So I wanted to actually use the concrete as a support. Um, what he's chosen to do is to um, put a little bit of a packer underneath the glass so it's off the concrete and then silicon it down and drill through into the tiles. Still the same as over the road, still a bit of a wave on it, um, but obviously I've got the concrete over the road to rely on, whereas this has only got silicon. So I'm a little bit mindful that maybe we should have been on the floor. Um, but again, this is how it should be done. Um, it does come with like a little, um, I can't see it, there it is, a little finish. That's meant to go on the floor. It's aluminium, it's meant to go on the floor and the glass is meant to sit in it. However, they, over time, just perish and start looking really awful. So that would have been better to be on the floor, but obviously over time it would land up um, discolouring and looking awful. So we've chosen to go with just silicon. So it does look good. So bless him, he's on holiday and he's landed up doing some work, but he's actually bored. So if he's bored, we'll take advantage of that. <laughs> Grandy, if you're watching this, very much appreciated. It's another job that saves me having to do. So that's where we are so far today. Um, downstairs, the guys have actually been doing um, something to do with the air conditioning. Let's have a quick look what they've been up to. There's been sheets going down there and all sorts. Let's have a quick look. I don't know what they've been up to. Obviously the trusty saw has been out. Um, so yeah, downstairs they brought some, um, some sheets of um, insulation. Which I'm sure is this. Not too sure what that's for. This has been plopped up there, so I'm assuming maybe she's been working on there. Ah, okay. So they're actually making some rigid duct by the looks of it. Right, okay. So rather than actually bringing in rigid duct, they've been making their own out of insulated board. Fair play. That's a good old patience. <laughs> anyway, so that's obviously what they're doing down here. And the next stint is going to be obviously getting all of this put in. So they want to put the rigid stuff off of the machines and then these come in off after that. So it looks like that's what they've been doing. They've been making the sizes themselves, just making sure they fit. So that's good. So, um, and then obviously they're going to be taking the, uh, the flexible to it. So that's what they've been up to, making these. Shaving them off, gluing them, sealing them. Fair play to them, good idea. Never thought of that myself. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for today. I don't think it's gonna be a great deal of change today. So if there is, I will let you know. If not, I'll carry on recording and I'll upload tomorrow. Um, thanks for watching in the meantime. Don't forget to leave some comments um, and let me know what you think of the partition. Good or bad? Good or bad job? Good morning to day three of actually this video, but I didn't film yesterday, so do apologize. So I'm going to take you through in a second and show you what's going on before I start. Don't forget, give me a like and subscribe. Give me some more comments. Not many comments this uh, last couple of uh, weeks, but then again, my videos have not been that consistent, so I do apologise. But anyway, so what's happening today? Um, we've got a rotivator from Williams in Six Roads. So they do a baby one. They actually call it a tiller. So for those of you looking for a rotivator, which is like a little petrol lawn mower, which I'll show you in a minute, with some teeth on the front that turn over, they do big ones with big wheels, they do a smaller version, and they do a really baby version, which they call domestic, which is perfect for what I needed to do. So I drove past yesterday, saw it outside, did a UE, went back in and saw it, and I think it was 47 for the day, of which yesterday, unfortunately, I've blown most of the time. Um, so I'm only got it for until 11 o'clock this morning, so I might just have to extend it. Anyway, so um, we're going to be continuing with the rotivation out there. The issue we do have is quite a few rocks in the soil, so they get jammed up in the smaller ones. You have to keep stopping, taking the rock out, starting again. So it's quite rocky and it doesn't need to be big stones in order for it to start. As you can see, I'm sweating already. I've been running around like a blue ass fly this morning. It is only four minutes past eight. Sherman's not here. So I'll do a word from that is attendance. 
um, but anyway so we managed to get the partition in there sorted which I'll show you in a second um, I did come back yesterday and Sherman was filling it and sanding it which I didn't really want in all fairness all I want to try and do today is nip to Coinman's um, again um, and get some polyurethane um, sort of varnish I just want to seal the edges sand the edges and seal the edges all I want to do but he's been filling and sanding which I didn't want to do but anyway I'll show you that in a second bathroom um, shower screen is in like I said in the video earlier on uh, which you've, you would have already seen uh, the father-in-law is here he fits it for, for a living so he's fitted the shower screen he has actually fit the shower screen on the concrete rather than against the concrete um, and there is no bead that goes on the base that you fix to the base so I'm a bit conscious at the moment because I've obviously got a slope on the shower screen on the shower floor then the glass is sitting on an edge that's actually at an angle so it's silicon then it's gone off but not the safest thing to do hence the reason why I put the other on the floor the downside put them on the floor water and that can come down the side so uh, as everything is in life is a sacrifice that's the sacrifice that I would made inside but it wasn't one that he wanted to make so anyway let me show you very quickly what we've been okay so as I've shown you already shower screen is in today I want to give that a good clean in here um, as you can see it's on the actual concrete which is not what I would have done, but at the same time, it's how it's meant to be done. Water then obviously comes off the screen and lands on the floor, exactly, exactly how it should be. We've got a silicon this bit here, um, because this is the bit that you actually had a wedge up against. Um, and as long as the silicon remains, it should be fine. So what I've done on my ones over the road is I've put them on the floor up against this concrete base, and I've also put the um, silver aluminium track, I put that in here as well, so it's up against here, so you've got, you've got a nice L shape of support. Uh, but does look good and that's how it should be and also this one's clear the other ones when i bought them it was covid there was no bloody stock on the island so i had to go with a tinted so i do prefer the clear that's for sure um, but as you can see in here it's pretty much done now i mean all we've got to do is the windows have arrived by the way bloody expensive to get them here because i've had to have them crated um, but anyway so the window will go in here at some point next week it will change the dynamics in here immediately and then we can finish off that little bit of skirting in the corner because we can't do that because we don't know the size and we're not too sure if we're going to have to make up this edge at all um, so until we get the window in here, we're not going to know whether that opening is perfect or not. Hopefully it is. If it is, we won't have to do anything on the opening at all. Uh, but to a certain extent, everything else is in it just needs a bloody good clean. There's dust in it from everywhere. Then we'll get this floor scraped and scrubbed, even though it's had a first clean anyway. Um, get it sealed. And to a certain extent, as much as it's not 100% complete, we've still got to put toilet roll holders up and all that sort of stuff. We are in. We are in. Okay, so today I want to get all the furniture back on but I want to get the rotivation started first. This was a bit of a bargain. So anybody looking for a new kitchen or kitchen install at the moment, price mark, 749 Bayesian. Look at the sink. It actually comes with the tap, soap dispenser, the sink, um, the mats to go in the sink, um, a trough that sits in between. Um, it's like a roller dryer deck, so you can actually lay this out and you can actually lay things on it or you can hose things off on it a cutting board and the two pieces, 749. Absolute bargain. You can have it top based or you can actually have it mounted underneath. So that's done. And a little bit of a bonus, I bought too many doors over. I don't, can't remember why, but I've got four spare doors. No, oh, there they are. Four spare doors, same gray as over the road. And I've actually got three carcasses plus one in the garage. So I've got four carcasses to go here. And one of them is going to be freestanding fridge. So I only need, I'm going to do five, which will take it to about here. So we'll take it to about there. It'll be about 3,000. So it'll be four carcasses. One of them will be a fridge freezer and one door short. Can you believe it? One door short. So I'm going to have to get another door um, sent in order for them all to match. And um, then I'll just need a worktop. And at some stage a hob at the moment i'm not really too fussed about the hob um, i just want a kitchen unit in here so that people can have a fridge um, and washing facilities for cutlery and that's it really um, as you can see this is all in not perfect obviously like i said sherwin's been filling and sanding i get why he's done it but in all fairness i don't mind this finish we just had to sand it down because it's a bit rough give it a quick sand and then get the polyurethane um, varnish on there so it seals it and stops it going this color basically. So as you can see, this is one that's uncut. This is one that is cut. So it's a slight difference. But anyway, I think you'll agree, it looks okay. Um, it certainly could look better, but it's all right. It does the job. And now that we've actually screwed it in, it's not that wobbly. Because it's eight foot, guys. It's a big, big thing. So that's all done. Um, the screen, glass screen for the sink 
has been painted. It's been laying around, so it's getting dirty. So it probably needs another coat of paint on there. So again, this is just a shelf um, from Coyman's. So it's, um, it's tempered glass, which is awesome. Um, all you do is you paint the back the color you want. You can paint it blue, pink, whatever. We've gone white, obviously. And that will become the splash back behind uh, the actual unit itself. So that will just stop the back plasterboard getting wet, getting soaked and having to be repainted. So we'll get that um, silicone on there today. And as you can see, it's not a bad fit. A little bit short, but again, I can't remember much. I think it's about 35 Bajan. So again, run laminate made. It's designed to be a shelf. It's designed to be shatterproof. So again, painted, fixed, done. Um, as you can see, fingerprints appearing around here. So we have to clean that again now. I always say to people, once we start painting, do not touch the walls or anything. As you can see, fingerprints everywhere, so we have to get that sorted. This is all rubbish. Tools are out here at the moment waiting to finish off um, a bookshelf. So I've got to get that bookshelf sorted today. I've wanted to build an eight foot bookshelf. So I've got a couple of sheets of that, cut them into 16s. And as I've said to you, I want to try and get that done. Yesterday I had to go and buy a Dow kit. Um, I don't even know where it is now. Anyway, it's here somewhere. So I bought a Dow kit and that's just literally so that we can, um, Obviously, the, the, the wood itself, the, the shelves themselves have got to be fixed. So um, you'll have three down rights and then some shelves going across, but the shelves have to be fixed into each other. So you buy a little wooden dowel kit that you drill holes in and the dowels go in and you obviously slide it in anyway. Anyway, so I bought that yesterday. We're gonna have a go at doing that. Um, I assume, oh, there it is. No, it's not, another bag. Another Coinman's bag. A never ending Coinman purchases. Sherman's arrived. Sherman, how are you? Um, okay, and then down here we started doing the rotivation yesterday, as far as I'm aware. Well, maybe not. So anyway, we need to obviously get out on here later on today and we can start rotivating. I think these have slightly broken up, so you might have had to go here. So we need to get the rotivator flat out down here today and try and get as many, um, as many of these big bouldery bits broken down into small pieces as possible and then get this raked before the rain comes. We are going to enter into rain season at some stage. And uh, the last thing you want to be doing is dealing with soil when it's rained. I've said plenty of times, the soil here is like clay. So whilst it's dry and it's like this, it's absolutely a pleasure to deal with. As soon as it gets a little bit of water on it, it just turns into a clay. And as soon as you stand on it, it sticks and it is a nightmare to deal with. So whilst it's dry, we need to crumble it up into as smallest pieces as possible, rake it as flat as possible, roll the living hell out of it, and ensure that we've got some nice consistency in here. Then I need to make a decision what we're going to do. Grass, turf, or astroturf. They're the three options. All of them are going to be expensive. Um, one's got maintenance, one hasn't. Decisions, decisions. But again, astroturf really should go down on some form of solid aggregate, not mud. So again, really, if we're going to do it in astroturf, it has to be done properly, and I, I just don't have the time, patience, or money for that. So I'll show you down here anyway. I've shown you down here anyway, but I've obviously I've broken it back in the meantime on it. So I've just literally got down here and clawed it down to the point where it's a little bit level. So I still need to do this bit here, as I said the other day. So we need to get that broken up and pulled over there. So it's a little bit of a high patch here and then we can run it down this way. So we'll get the rotivator on here today and get that broken up as best as possible. And then we can do the rest of it with rakes. At the moment, it's hoe only because they are just too, they're just too big. Uh, but obviously things like this, the big rocks, is just going to kill the machine. So even these little ones here are going to cause a few problems. So we'll get that out flat out in a minute. The only downside is it revs like a banshee. Is it banshee or banshee, you tell me? Uh, but it revs very high, so it's a bit of a screamer. But it needs to be done. But again, I think what we'll do is we'll try and break up some of this as well to try and get this consistently flowing into each other. So we'll get that done as well today. And that is, uh, that's going to be pretty much our plan for this morning just purely because I've only got it until 11 o'clock today and I've already burnt half of the, the rental. Could have actually done this last night. So yeah, clearing out the actual cottage, getting that completely as emptied as possible. I don't want anything in there now. Um, the floor's done, the partition's done, the bathroom's nearly finished. There's no real need for us to have any anything else up there apart from some basic tools. So I think we'll get that emptied today. We'll get that mopped and cleaned today um, and spend most of the morning obviously with a rotivator or tiller, whatever they want to call it. Um, in fact, let me show you where it is. It might be, there it is. There she is. So if anyone's ever seen one, this is a baby one. So they call this a domestic one. As you can see, it's really small, um, but they do a bigger version of it, which obviously is wider. It's probably about twice, as, twice the width where the blades are concerned here. So that's about that wide. 
then you've got another one with two big wheels that you just stand behind and pretty much does all the work. So this is a small, they call this a tiller rather than a rotavator. Um, but it's just for small jobs, which I think should be fine for what we've got upstairs. So anyway, don't forget to give me some uh, subscription love down below and I will check and review throughout the day and obviously finish off the video and upload a bit later on. Thanks for watching. Okay, a hoe is definitely, definitely hard work. But so is that. Jesus. Okay, so we've been going for about 45 minutes. That's all pretty much done. We'll go over it again in a minute anyway. Just wanted to make sure I was uh, balancing the fuel out. Here is now looking a lot better. We still got this little hump we're gonna take out and spread. Um, but to a certain extent, everything in that corner is now pushed up against this wall here and coming a little bit this way, but also not too much towards the house. So as you can see, it's quite a mound. So we're gonna break that up and push that that way. Um, and then obviously try and um, hoe this out and, and, and break this up a bit more. Now, obviously there's water pipes underneath here, so we do have to be careful. So down here, there's a water pipe going all the way around to the pump room. Then you've got the mains water into the house and that comes out over down this wall and then elbows across here and then down. So obviously they'd be bloody careful there. But as you can see, that's looking too big. We need to break that up. Um, but also I just quickly broke up the top piece here to try and get rid of that hump that was here because we didn't come into this piece. So we just turn this over. Now it's looking a lot better. We can try and bring some of this down into here again, get rid of the bigger stuff, fill this up a bit more so it all lands up coming down here equally. But as you can see, it's away from the house. Be careful of the pipe, break this up. So, um, so we'll, 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 we'll break this a bit more away from the house to get over here. We need to break this corner up because it's hard to get into. So we need to hoe that out, break that up in a minute. We'll hoe this out as well and break this up because obviously it's too near the pipe. And also the stones, we just need to de-stone. So any stone we see, we need to get rid of. Because obviously we're not gonna want it anyway and I don't wanna be getting a stone in the eye as well. So if we can try and get rid of those, break this up, get that over, and then we should still stop here. This will come right over into this corner, quite high, and then it will slope away. And we're trying to incentivize the water to go either side of this tree and out. So that's showing in the house. Um, I'll check in soon. Okay, so we're at one o'clock on Friday. What are we now? 20, 30 minutes. God bless you. All you do for death. Anyway, I'll just give you a quick overview of the um, ducting that's going in. So, we've got some obviously homemade home rigid, and we've also got some um, flexible as well. Flexible. So, let me show you what that looks like. So, what we're doing with this rear machine, this is going to be for the living room. So, there's the cassette in the middle. This is a rigid duct that they've made. This is a rigid duct that they've made along here. And then we've got the 10 inch ones coming off here and they're gonna feed the three rear sockets. So we've got one that's over here, that's towards the uh, beach side of the living area. One in the middle, and we've got one over here. And then these two here are returns. So this is what pulling the hot air out of the room. So they're gonna be going up on the, uh, the big gray wall right in the middle. So this is at the floor of the big gray wall. So we're gonna have to take those up in a minute. Um, and we're also gonna have to get some um, grills made for those because we haven't had those done they were obviously never going to be used they were 14 inch square holes so we're gonna have to think about what to do with those i think they go under the wall by about an inch so obviously they're going to be boxing going up into here so we're gonna have to get some finishes done for that um, and i'm assuming there'll be some form of service elements that go into here as well so that's the final part to be done but as you can see a lot neater now that we've actually punched through the wall and then the kitchen area same sort of thing so we've got the cassette here again rigid duct that's been made here Rigid duct that's been made here. This one's going to be feeding, I thought it was going to be two, but it's actually now going to be four. How they're going to get four 10 inches through a 14 inch hole, I'm not too sure. Um, but that's going to be the plan. They might have the can go out, that out a little bit on the right hand side and the left hand side in order to get them up there. But as you can see, that goes all the way to the very top of the grey wall. And what they're intending to do is to have two, if this was upstairs, for instance, they're talking about having two vents here at the base and two at the very top um, and those are over here and they've done them in white which i need to change so we're going to need to order new ones we'll get them painted don't want white ones on the wall obviously they're going to look a bit of a, an eyesore so we'll either paint them in the gray or we'll uh, change them for aluminium ones but again same thing we've got um a 14 inch hole underneath the kitchen unit that's actually a draw down so that's pulling hot air down we've got another one that's going to be going over here on the other 14 inches as far as I'm aware. And I think they're gonna run one over to the one just near the fridge, which is this one here. So we'll have a, a 10 by 20, 
and two 14 inch drawbacks. And that's the pull, that's the, that's the return back hot air coming back to the unit. And then obviously you've got the four feeds that are gonna be coming straight up into the kitchen that way. So as you can see, I, I'm not the tallest man in the world, but I'm standing underneath it. It does clear. Um, so if you ever do want to land up having some form of, that's the only downside having them mounted on this wall here. It's obviously taking up the room along here, which is a real shame. We did want to use these two here, um, but obviously running straight out of here, coming across this door frame here and then coming around this column, it's just, it's not feasible. So that's the reason why we're doing what we're doing here. So anyway, um, that's pretty much where we are. And then obviously when we have the other one installed, uh, the other one will be mounted over here somewhere. I did see some uh, drawing on the wall saying power. So I don't know where that was. Oh, there you go. So there's uh, times, times 220 plug. So I'm assuming somewhere along here, there'll be another unit. And again, that'll be feeding the bedrooms. Bedroom one over there, bathroom one, bedroom two, bedroom three, bathroom two, and then bedroom four. Um, so all of that ducting will go along. Obviously, unfortunately, it's gonna to have to go around the, the columns, the beams, sorry. So that will be a little bit of an eyesore. But again, if we can try and keep it up against the wall, then uh, we can maybe get that box in at some stage. But anyway, so that's um, pretty much where we are so far. Let me quickly take you upstairs and show you what it looks like now after our rotivation. Jesus, that thing was hard work. So I think it landed up being just under two hours. Quick look. So, as I said, we started here just to get this a little bit more balanced off, so that's all nice. There's some rubble that's come out, so Sherwin's just sorting out down here. We need to raise this a little bit, a little bit more, so we need to get that raked in. We need to get this all cleaned off, obviously. Um, and then we'll get the roller down there just to try and get the bigger stuff out. As you can see now, the water can now come around this tree. Um, and we'll get this obviously all softened in. And he's over there just doing some more hoeing. So that's what it's gonna look like. That's the aim. Need to get this rate down as well. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. I can't see there being a great deal of a change from now. It's time now, one o'clock. I've got to take that machine back. So I'll take that machine back. And I think we're pretty much done for this week. So I'll load up the video. Hope uh, what I've loaded has been informative. Give me some comments below and some uh, some thumbs up or thumbs down if you don't mind. And I will check in with you guys, Brighton Breeze, next week. Have a great weekend and thanks for watching the channel. Thank you.